So, of course, with the NBA season winding down day by day, we're getting closer and close to the NBA Finals. You guys already know, pretty soon, we're going to have the All-NBA teams coming out. And before those things come out, I would like to predict them. I am going to predict the All-NBA teams right here, right now. But, of course, before I get into this video, make sure to like, subscribe, turn the notification bell. You guys help me out a little bit. And without further ado... Let's get right into this video. Now, of course, we interrupt this little scheduled regular program to give you the league MVP. If, in case you didn't know, it was announced yesterday. It hasn't been formally announced yet. But apparently, Nikola Jokic has won back-to-back -back MVPs. And to be quite honest with you, I really don't have any arguments. The guy had the highest PR in the league this year. One of the highest, if not the highest of all time. Led the Nuggets to nearly 50 wins without two of their best players, and Michael Porter Jr. And also without having quite possibly one of the better point guards in the league in Jamal Murray. Nikola Jokic deserves this award, man. I know that the Nuggets weren't the best team in the world. They lost to the Warriors in the playoffs, but to say that and to respond to that argument, one, the league MVP is a regular season award, and two, you look at the circumstances, and no doubt Nikola Jokic is the most valuable and the best player in the league this year. The NBA got it right once again this year. Nikola Jokic won back-to-back -back MVPs. Now, getting right into the real video, I am going to be predicting the All-NBA teams. And I'm going to start off with the All-NBA first team. Now, I'm just going to give you guys a heads up. These are some really difficult choices. Very difficult choices. These came down within a hair of a difference. I had to dig into wins, win shares, PER. I dug into every possible statistic in order to make these lists. So, of course, here we go. At the first point guard position, All-NBA first teamer, we got John Morant. John Morant was incredible this season. The dude averaged 27 points, like 27, 6-6, six and 7-7, six, seven and seven, something like that. I know he's injured right now in the playoffs, but John Morant, no doubt, was arguably the best point guard in the entirety of the league this season led the Grizzlies to a second seed one of the best Grizzlies teams that I've watched in my entire lifetime one of the best Grizzlies teams definitely within the last five to ten years John Morant deserves to be here as much as I may not like he gets compared you know him getting compared to Trey Young because you know I guess you can't tell by the background I'm a pretty big Atlanta fan I gotta admit John Morant had an amazing year he's continuing to have an amazing year in the playoffs and I really really hope that he can return but we just got news that he has a bone bruise, so he's pretty doubtful for the rest of the playoffs. Now, going to the next card, we have Luka Dantich. Luka Dantich has been incredible pretty much the entire season. I mean, this is not a surprise, to be honest. This is a 23-year-old who's dominating the NBA. He's uh, tied the series 2-2 against the Suns as of the recording of this video. Luka Doncic is just an amazing player. The guy's 23 years old. He reminds me so much of LeBron James's IQ, along with the skill set of somebody that really I've never seen before, somebody I can't really think about. So Luka Doncic, he's had an amazing year. 28-8-8, had arguably even a better year last season, made uh, all in NBA first team last season. This season, numbers didn't really change too much. He, uh, You can argue that he was even more productive on offense, so I think Luka Doncic is definitely going to be there. Now, going to the first four position of the video, we have Jason Tatum on the All-NBA first team. Think about it. The Celtics, they were a top seed, 51 wins. They were one of the best teams in the NBA. Of course, you look at Jason Tatum, had a pretty high PER, had very, very good stats, averaged 26, 27 points a game. He had also a very, very good defensive gear, good first round in the playoffs, which I know doesn't really play too much of a factor. However, you have to take all of this into consideration. Jason Tatum had a great year. This has been by far the best year of his career. And if we didn't have Giannis, Joker, and Joel Embiid in the league, he might have been in MVP voting this season. Jason Tatum was an absolutely phenomenal basketball player this year. He reminds me so much of Tracy McGrady, man. Tracy McGrady reminds me just like this dude. Like, Tracy McGrady was just as talented, just as cultivating to watch, just as exciting. But at the same time, Jason Tatum, he just brings that oomph to his game. Hopefully, he doesn't get injured like Tracy McGrady. However, Without further ado, Jason Tatum, one of the league's most talented players. I expect to see him on this list for a long time. Now, the last two should be pretty obvious. We have Giannis Antetokounmpo, who was an MVP, two-time MVP, just the MVP just about two seasons ago, if you want to go all the way back there. Giannis Antetokounmpo is the best player sustained in the NBA right now, and in my opinion, has been for the last three years. Giannis Antetokounmpo has been absolutely phenomenal these last three seasons. This year, averaged near 30 points, 11 rebounds, and actually 
had one of the best passing seasons, if not the best passing season of his career with nearly six assists. Giannis Antetokounmpo has developed into the best player in the entire league. We are seeing that in the playoffs. We've seen that over the last couple years in the regular season. Already has his ring. He's entering the upper echelon of all-time greats. Giannis Antetokounmpo deserves to be on this All-NBA first team list. And of course, pretty obvious, the MVP, Nikola Jokic, is going to be the center of the All-NBA first team. Once again, was huge for the Nuggets. Nearly led the Nuggets to 50 wins without Michael Porter Jr., nor having Jamal Murray, two of their best players. The fact that Nikola Jokic did that this season and was still able to lead this team into a playoff push, very, very impressive. No doubt the NBA got it right this year. If we're going with best statistics, we're probably not going with Jokic. It's a bit of a toss-up. But if we're going with the most valuable player in the league, it is Nikola Jokic, and it's not even close. That's, that's my basis on that. Nikola Jokic is on the All-NBA first team. Now, moving on to the All-NBA second team. Going to go with Trey Young at the first point guard position. I'm an Atlanta Hawks fan. So this wasn't a hard decision for me, as you already know. Trey Young had an amazing year. Despite the Hawks getting eliminated pretty early by the Miami Heat and by eliminated, I mean absolutely obliterated by the Miami Heat, Trey Young had an amazing season. 27, almost 28 points, 9 assists. He led the league in total points and total assists. He also had a pretty good rebounding season, had one of his best shooting seasons of his career so far. Trey Young is an absolute phenomenon. He is one of the best point guards in the league. I personally think he can compete for the top three point guards in the league. Trey Young deserves to be here, and I think he's going to make a huge, huge contest with John Morant and Luka Doncic to be on that All-NBA first team very, very soon. Now, to the next guard, we have my boy, D-Book. Devin Booker, another very, very good season. This guy is super underrated. Nobody, and I mean, it's like nobody notices this guy. It's absolutely insane to me. It almost enrages me to see this guy go unnoticed for a full season after, after, after averaging, excuse me, nearly 27 points, 5-5. Five and five along with the best team in the NBA that won 64, 65 games, Devin Booker deserves to be here. And if you do not agree, you are living under a rock. I'm not really going to explain any further. Devin Booker is among the upper echelon of shooting guards in this league. He no doubt deserves to be here. Now, getting a little bit higher in age after talking about some of the young bucks, the second team forward, the first one at least, is my boy LeBron James. LBJ, 19-year veteran, still making it look easy. 30 points per game this season at the age of 37, which in case you don't know is absolutely unheard of. LeBron James is no doubt still one of the best players in the league at the age of 37. There, I said it. It's there. I'm going to say it right now. LeBron James is still the best player in the, or excuse me, one of the best players in the entire league at the age of 37 years old. He's an amazing scorer. He's probably going to be first of all time on the on the all-time scoring list by the time, by this time, maybe next season. LeBron James is amazing. He is my GOAT. He's going to be on this All-NBA second team. Now, of course, going to the next guy, guy who I uh, don't particularly call my favorite, but I respect him for his talent, and that's the boy KD, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant had another amazing season. 30 points per game, like 37 and 6. Again, Kevin Durant's one of the best players in the entirety of the league. And while he had a pretty boo-boo series against the Celtics, that's kind of what bumped him down under Giannis Antetokounmpo. The fact that he also got injured during the middle of the season, didn't play as many games, that bumped him down to second team over Kevin Durant. No doubt still one of the best players in the league. Very, very impressive with what he did this season. And... It's really a travesty that Joel Embiid has to make the All-NBA second team, but what are you going to do? Nikola Jokic, he won the MVP, and when Sinners win the MVP, that means somebody gets bumped down. And I know Joel Embiid is somewhere on earth watching this video saying, man, what do I have to do to win the MVP award? Led the league in points, averaged over 11 rebounds, had his best assisting and passing season of his career, and it still somehow wasn't enough. I feel bad for you, Joel Embiid. I'm not going to lie. I really do. But Nikola Jokic had an insane year. You're on the All-NBA second team. You have a chance to win the finals, which Nikola Jokic didn't even get close to, by the way. So Joel Embiid on my second team. He rounds up the second part of this prediction. Now, of course, going to the third team, All-NBA third team, is where things get pretty, pretty interesting. Once again, of course, we're going to start off with Chris Paul. Now, I know this is not the most popular decision, not the most glamour and pretty decision, 
But no doubt, Chris Paul most definitely deserves to be here. He led the league in assists per game. He's also the point guard of the single best team in the entirety of the NBA, Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul, also a great defender. He deserves to be here. The guy's super underrated. He is still one of the best point guards in the league. Once again, just turned 37 a couple days ago. Very, very happy for Chris Paul. I really want him to get a ring before his career is over. But uh, Luka Doncic, as of the recording of this video, is making that very, very hard on the Phoenix Suns right now. However... Getting rid of all the discretions, of course. Chris Paul, one of the best point guards in the league, definitely deserves to be here. Speaking of another great point guard, the second guard on the All-NBA third team is going to be Stephen Curry. Now, I know this is going to trigger a lot of my Curry fans out there. Oh, my goodness. Micah, Stephen Curry deserves to be over Trey Young. Stephen Curry deserves to be over Devin Booker. Well, personally, I don't think so. Stephen Curry, I don't think, played as many games as those guys. He was injured up a little bit. He had a down season as far as his standards are. So Stephen Curry, he also had his worst shooting season of his career, by the way. I'm going to put Steph Curry on the third team. It's absolutely insane if you ask me. The dude can have his worst shooting season. Just think about this. Stephen Curry's worst shooting season is an all-NBA third team level season. That should tell you enough on how absolutely ridiculous of a player Stephen Curry is. Stephen Curry is one of the best players in the league, one of the best players in point guards of all time, deserves to be on this third team. Now, of course, going to our forward, and I really, really had a big debate, should I put him on second, first, third? But DeMar DeRosa ended up going to third team. I don't think he had a better season than LeBron James this year, despite his team being better. I think he had a huge disappointment in the playoffs when he couldn't quite show up as much as you would have liked him to. Also, he didn't have a better year than my all-NBA first teamer, who was Jason Tatum, who was still in the playoffs, and the Boston Celtics had a way better record. The Bulls had a huge meltdown to end the season, so that's why DeMar DeRozan's on my third team. No doubt the best season of his career, though. The guy averaged 28 points. He had one of the best mid-range seasons in the entirety of the league. His PER was one of the higher ones in the entirety of the league. Excuse my spit right there in the camera, but of course, you guys get the point. DeMar DeRozan was one of the best guys in the entirety of the league this year. Definitely deserves to be here. Now, of course, for our next guy, third team forward, we have Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam, again, not a popular option, but he led Toronto to a huge run in the season in order to secure that sixth seed and make a little bit of a push in the playoffs. What, they were like six seed, seven seed maybe? Can't quite remember right now, but I know Pascal Siakam was a huge part of that. He's also been a beast, beastly beast on defense as he usually is. Pascal Siakam is one of the most underrated players in the league. In my opinion, low-key a top 15 player in the league, if you look at the grand scheme of things, deserves to be here and rounding out the All-NBA teams, All-NBA third team center is going to be my boy, Cat Carl Anthony Towns, the center that dropped 60 points this year, one of the best shooting big men to ever play at the game. Carl Anthony Towns averaged near 25 points, almost 10 rebounds. He was hanging around nine rebounds a game, and he had a very, very great passing and playmaking year as well. Carl Anthony Towns deserves to be here. I'm really, really glad to have him here. Carl Anthony Towns making his all, his first, excuse me, all NBA team. I think that team, and by that team, I mean the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves have shown amazing signs of greatness going and coming out of the season. So I think Carl Anthony Towns is going to be here for a very, very long time. But, of course, without further ado, that's going to end this video. Thank you for watching. I have TikTok, Spotify, Instagram. All those links are going to be in the description as usual. But, of course, of course, the most important thing of the video, the thing that you're here for, I wish you nothing but the best. My big bars, I wish that you stay loved and stay blessed. And without further ado, I'm going to end this video Thank you for watching.